Dr. Marlin was recently on my best friend Chris Williamson's podcast, and he did that top 10 exercises to build muscle game that Chris loves to play. If you watch my shorts, you know that I disagree with Dr. Marlin on a lot of things. But believe it or not, there's actually a lot of things that I do agree with him on. So as a fellow exercise scientist, even though it doesn't make up my entire personality like Dr. Marlin, I figured I'd react to his top 10 exercises and give my input. Before we get started, if you're looking to build an aesthetic physique, be sure to check out my 90 day aesthetic body blueprint. This takes all the guesswork out of building an aesthetic and athletic physique. But if you're more focused on athletic performance, be sure to check out my 120 day peak athleticism package. Both of these will be in the description. If you only had 10 exercises for the rest of your life, to hold on to and build as much muscle mass as possible, what would they be? High bar squats, because they hit the quadriceps and adductors and glutes very well, the amount of fatigue you get from them is less than you would with other types of squats like low bar squats. Because until my arms got too big to hold a bar on my back, uh, I fit into the high bar position like a glove, and I love that. Um, I fit into very few things like a glove, mostly condoms as like 80, cubic centimeters left of room. But, um, so high bar squats. I'm gonna do my best to ignore that terrible attempt of a joke he just made, but this squat is a great choice from Dr. Marlin. To be honest, I've never seen this dude actually barbell squat. I've always seen him using machines, but I guess now we know why he does it. But I've been literally disabled this dude to where he doesn't even have enough range of motion to do a high bar squat. The high bar squat has to be one of the best exercises and should be a staple in your routine, as not only does it do a great job building the quads, adductors, and glutes, but it's also great for functionality and athleticism due to the balance and stability demand that it requires. If I had to pick a squat variation to add into my top 10 exercises, it would have to be a high bar squat or a low bar squat, as these are easier to load up than other squat variations. I really don't know why Dr. Marlin has beef with the low bar squat. It's still a great exercise and you'll actually be stronger on a low bar squat than you would be in a high bar squat. I only really recommend low bar squats to girls though, because the low bar squat has a higher emphasis on the hip extensors, so it's better for their aesthetics. I would say the overstanding over overhead barbell press just because I'm like really good at it and it feels great for me to do until I guess my arms are not too big. I can't do that either. So that's fun. Is there anything in that where the bracing, the midline bracing is good for just other stuff generally? Yeah, it's good for like manhood strength. Like if you can overhead press two plates for reps, like you're a serious motherfucker and people shouldn't fuck with you probably. Surprisingly, another great choice from Dr. Marlin. I'm surprised you said standing overhead press because optimal bodybuilders have such a huge beef with the standing overhead press because the core is the limiting factor. I mean, optimal bodybuilders are such geeks, they act like a quarter man is a bad thing when in reality, it's a very good thing. You can't take away a quarter man in real life, so you shouldn't be doing it at the gym. Every single activity outside the gym, you need to use your core to stabilize so you can produce force so you should be doing the same thing in the gym. Just like the barbell squat, I've never seen Dr. Marlin do an overhead press, but again, I guess we know why. Bodybuilding literally disabled this dude. The overhead press has to be one of the best shoulder exercises as it's a foundational human movement. It does emphasize the front delts more, so make sure you're doing your fair share of lateral raises and rear delt exercises such as a face pull or a rear delt fly for complete shoulder development. The shoulders are one of the most aesthetic muscles and are key for an aesthetic physique. But what else is important is making sure your face looks good. That's that's why I'm excited to have Teach Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. They help men start and maintain a skincare routine by simplifying the entire process. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system that comes with all the basics. A daily face wash, an exfoliating scrub, an AM moisturizer, and a PM moisturizer. My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. They really make the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Their products that make my skin look and feel better than ever, but you don't have to take my word for it. They have over 7,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers all over the world. In addition to amazing skin, members of Teach Handling get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your own box, exclusive monthly deals, and free US shipping. And because Teach Handling is sponsoring today's video, they're giving my viewers a crazy deal. Just click the link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, a free gift, and 20% off for life. By the way, both gifts you're choosing from are $20 of value and are complete game changers. A silicone body scrubber or a nail and face grooming kit. Personally, I prefer the nail and face grooming kit because it comes with everything that I need. Two premium stainless steel nail clippers for precise trimming, a pair of durable scissors for shaping and detailing, and high quality tweezers for precision grooming. Don't miss out on an amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. Um, and then I would have to say skull crushers for triceps, barbell, 
Skull Crusher. Barbell Skull Crusher, not a bad exercise, but if I had 10 exercises to build muscle, I wouldn't include this exercise. I would stick to compound lifts, but there's nothing wrong with doing direct tricep training. The thought process behind a Skull Crusher is that it puts the long end of the tricep on a stretch, which will be better for hypertrophy as muscles tend to respond better when trained at lengthened positions. And if you know Dr. Marlin, you know he loves his crazy stretch exercises. But believe it or not, recent studies show that the triceps actually respond better when trained in the shortened position. I would still take research studies with a grain of salt as that can be very difficult to conduct. So you shouldn't pick in between training your triceps in the lengthened position or shortened position, but you should rather do both. This will allow for variety in your tricep training as well as hitting the triceps from different angles. But if I had to pick a tricep exercise for a top 10 exercise video, I would go with the dip, a close grip bench press, or a straight bar push down. Um, pull-ups for the back, overhand, uh, chin to bar. Why overhand, not underhand? A raw personal preference. I can't rotate my shit in enough to do underhand anymore. I have slowly become more disabled as I became more jacked. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, there's like an ability curve where you get better at shit and then you get worse at shit. <laughs> Pull-ups are another good choice from Dr. Marlin. I would still say to do your fair share of chin-ups as it's important to hit the back from different angles. It's just so crazy that he chose pull-ups just because he can't perform chin-ups. Again, bodybuilding is disabling this dude. While pull-ups is a great choice, Dr. Marlin performs pull-ups like an idiot. Firstly, he occasionally uses straps, which is just crazy. I mean, Dr. Marlin keeps talking about manhood. It's like manhood is gripping the bar like a man. Don't make your grip an incompetent idiot. Stop using straps. The only exercise where it makes sense to wear straps is a deadlift. And second, he does pull-ups with a soft noodle core. This has to be one of the most common mistakes I see at the gym and it leads to less pull-ups. You watching this video, make sure when you're doing pull-ups, you keep your core tight and tighten your legs. This will prevent energy leakage and lead to a more efficient pull-up. Barbell bent rows from a deficit. Get two Barbell for the back. bent rows from a deficit. Mm -hmm. So okay. you stand on a little box and yep. you can go super deep in the stretch and then touch your tummy and come back. Any reason for doing that as opposed to a chest supported or a seal? Manhood. Yeah, <laughs> manhood shit, like an orangutan would do. You okay. don't see him leaning on a fucking tree branch. Right. Barbara Rowe, another good choice from Dr. Marlin. He's really shocking me here. It's crazy though, even optimal body rows like Dr. Marlin, when given top 10 exercises to build muscle, they stray away from their lazy exercises and actually pick standing exercises. It's because deep down inside, these optimal bodybuilders know that the exercises they consistently do at the gym are freaking lazy. Him saying that he does a barbell row for manhood just proves he's a nerd. I would say I like doing standing exercises because it improves my athleticism and my functionality and helps me develop a strong core. But Dr. Marlin doesn't seem like the guy to do or watch sports. But hey, there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. Nothing wrong with being a virgin and a nerd. Him saying to do a barbell row from a deficit is just plain unnecessary and dramatic. I go way more in depth on this obsession with a crazy stretch in my Optimal Bodybuilders video. But in summary, Optimal Bodybuilders act like it's concrete science that these crazy stretches will build the most amount of muscle. When in reality, there's actually very little research on this subject. And when they do site studies, they don't do these crazy deep stretches, but just go through a normal range of motion. One study and article cited about stretch mediated hypertrophy literally had people only go to 90 degrees of knee flexion on a leg extension. That's not a super deep range of motion, buddy, because most people average about 140 degrees of knee flexion. And there was one study that found that 90 degrees of knee flexion on a squat built the same amount of muscle as 140 degrees of knee flexion on a squat. So is 90 degrees of knee flexion the stretch position or is it 140? Because 90 degrees is not a deep stretch. It's like the term stretch position is very subjective, but again, I go way more in depth on this topic in my Optimal Bodybuilders video. As I was editing this video, I came across a great description of stretch mediated hypertrophy from a strength and conditioning research page on X which states that stretch mediated hypertrophy is triggered when sarcomeres are stretched beyond a certain point, not when muscles are stretched. This explains why 90 degrees of knee flexion built the same amount of muscle in the quads as 140 degrees of knee flexion and proves my point that these crazy stretches are not necessary. And if you look at the way that Dr. Marlin does an incline bench press, you're gonna be lifting way less weight in this position. Don't be stupid and dramatic. A standard full range of motion barbell row will be enough. Uh, let's see what else. Stiff legged deadlift for the hamstrings you and the glutes. You wouldn't have hit that enough with your bent over rows? No, not even close. Yeah, it's isometric only with bent over rows. You need a dynamic movement for the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. Um, it also hits a crap load of your spinal erectors and glutes and all this other stuff. Wait, did my boy Chris here really just say that the barbell rows hit the hamstrings well? Every time I do one of these top 10 exercise videos, 
Chris never fails to piss me off. But enough of my Chris rant, a stiff legged deadlift is a decent choice from Dr. Marlin. I personally prefer RDLs for my hamstrings, but knowing Dr. Marlin and his weird super range of motion fetish, this choice doesn't surprise me. And actually if I had 10 exercises, I actually would have gone with a standard barbell deadlift to improve strength as well. But there's nothing wrong with a stiff legged deadlift. If your goal is hypertrophy, I would say RDLs are better. But if your goal is to improve range of motion and flexibility, a stiff legged deadlift will be a better choice. But I always like to say there is no best exercise and variety is key. So I think it's important to program all three of the exercises I mentioned and switch them up about every four to six weeks. Um, the, ooh, yeah, I have to say the cambered bar bench press for chest. The cambered bar is allows you to go deeper than your own chest level. And we have lots of research, especially recently, but lots of good theoretical work before that shows us that a deep stretch is a, a pretty big deal for hypertrophy. It enhances the amount of muscle growth you get. So I would say I'll take an inclined version of cambered bar bench. Oh, here we go again with this super range of motion fetish. Bench press is obviously a great choice as it's a great compound exercise that hits the chest as well as the shoulders and triceps. But Dr. Mike needs to calm the fuck down on these super range of motion exercises for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Don't let Dr. Marlin pressure you into doing these super range of motion exercises. And just to clarify, I'm not saying to do partial range of motion. Just go through range of motion you feel comfortable and strong in. It's crazy how he says there's tons of research when there's really not. I'm guessing he's confusing a super deep range of motion with just standard full range of motion. As I mentioned earlier, the stretch position is very subjective. So does this mean we need to do super deep stretches or our standard rest where you feel a light to moderate stretch enough for hypertrophy? And remember that stretch medium hypertrophy is not triggered when muscles are stretched, but rather when the sarcomeres are stretched beyond a certain point. Again, more research is needed. I'll take dips in addition to that for the lower pecs and just overall manliness. Dips are sweet. Good amount of triceps as well. We've got long totally. heads, long yes. head on the yes. overheads. Yes. Yep. To be honest, based on the exercises he selected earlier, I think dips are a stupid choice. Firstly, the chest and triceps are already hit. And second, the lower pecs are typically overdeveloped on most people. So direct lower chest work is usually very unnecessary. This is why I like to use dips as a tricep exercise as you only really need a flat bench variation to get a good amount of lower pec stimulus. If you want to include you should have just replaced these skull crushers for it and not added it as well because that's just way too much chest and tricep focus. Have we done Yeah, yeah. we haven't done side delts yet, yeah. no. So I would say super ROM laterals. It's where you do dumbbell laterals, but you don't stop here. You just go all the way and kind of touch your palms together at the top. Lateral raises are a great choice as the front delts are hit very well in pressing movements and the rear delts are hit well in pulling movements. I just don't get this super range of motion crap. Firstly, Dr. Marlin, why are you wearing lifting straps on a lateral raise? Second, there's a difference between full range of motion and effective range of motion. Effective range of motion is going about 90 degrees of abduction, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, whichever one feels the best for you. It's crazy how optimal bodybuilders act like they're such hypertrophy experts when none of them are Mr. Olympias or even coach Mr. Olympias. And Mr. Olympia, Calvin Bump said, doesn't even do this super range of motion crap. As I mentioned, there's a difference between effective range of motion and full range of motion, but there's also a difference between full range of motion of a joint and full range of motion of a muscle. Going all the way up is considered full abduction range of motion of the shoulder. Full range of motion of the delts is right around that 90 degree mark. Going way higher up like this is not going to build more muscle. And I'd even argue it would build less muscle because you have to use far less weight. If you want to do this super range of motion lateral raise for mobility, then fine. But if you're looking to maximize lateral delt growth, super range of motion lateral raises are just completely unnecessary. Um, and then I'll say seated incline dumbbell curls for biceps. So boom, like that. Again, it's tension at the stretch. Great exercise. And to finish off, Dr. Marlin picks seated incline curls, which is a good choice. This exercise puts the biceps in a stretch because the biceps are also shoulder flexors. And we all know Dr. Marlin loves this length in position. When it comes to bicep training, again, don't overthink this stretch bullshit. Just focus on hitting the biceps from a variety of shoulder positions, such as this one where the shoulders are more extended, a neutral shoulder position like a dumbbell curl, and a flexed shoulder position like a chin up. If I had 10 exercises, I would have gone with a chin up as if I'm limited to only 10 exercises, I'm spamming compound movements. The shoulder press overhead barbell press is there. If I was purely aiming for hypertrophy, I would just take it out altogether because it's insanely high axial fatigue, as you may suspect. Um, and it just really like is nothing it trains that other exercises can't train better, but it's there because of, again, for the soul. And if we're doing something as absurd as restricting ourselves to 10 exercises the rest of our life, I get soul shit.
It's like, what meal are you going to eat in your last meal before they kill you? I'm not choosing macros. Fuck that. It's crazy that when optimal bodybuilders are giving top 10 exercises, they pick the foundational exercises and all these stupid optimal machine garbage because deep down inside, they know that the foundational exercises are the most effective and that these lazy machines are for bumps. Yes. And if you enjoy man shit, standing upright, barbell, shouldered overhead. Have at it. Yeah, exactly. Just, just know the trade-off. Now, uh, I will also say, here's the trade-off. The trade-off is when you go to the club and you're standing there with your buddy and he does more scientifically effective exercises and there's a girl like looking at you too and she's like, I'm gonna go with your friend because his doubts are like, bag. and you're like, God damn it, but spirit energy, but she doesn't know about that. It makes me really sad that the first chance he gets, he talks badly about the overhead press behind its back. Of course, this nerd goes, oh, scientifically effective exercises. If you suck at the standing overhead press, that just means your core strength sucks, buddy. No girl will want a gross, unesthetic bodybuilder. So leave the standing overhead press alone or we're gonna have some serious problems. Hey. You better keep moving, brother. Oh, what? Gonna, what are you gonna do? It's gonna be you a problem. You keep talking, but you yeah. ain't doing nothing. It's gonna be a big problem. Yeah, it is. Don't touch my stomach with your stomach, because that's gonna be a problem. Back up. Or what? You're walking on thin ice. Back up. Now, when it comes to mistakes that Dr. Marlin made, the first is that he didn't include a lunge variation. Unilateral leg work is so important as most activities of daily living and sports skills are unilateral leg movements, and they're very important for fixing and preventing muscular imbalances. But since the lunge is the same muscles as the squat, I don't have too much beef with this one, but it's something he should have considered. Next, he didn't include a carry. It's crazy how bodybuilders never talk about the carry when it has to be one of the best exercises. Not is it very useful for daily activities and sports sports skills, but it does a great job hitting the deep postural muscles, improving core strength, and improving grip strength. The next mistake is he didn't include any rotation. It's good that Dr. Marlin picked a lot of standing free weight exercises which hit the core well, but these exercises don't hit the core in the transverse plane, so it would have been great if he included some sort of rotation work. This would have led to his exercises contributing to overall core development, but it would build fantastic obliques too, which are actually very important for an aesthetic physique. Bodybuilders try and convince you that developed obliques hurts your physique, but if you look at Leon on Edwards, having developed obliques looks freaking crazy. And the last mistake is too much arm slash chest emphasis. As I mentioned earlier, the dip was a very strange and stupid choice. And when it comes to the arm emphasis, it's not a terrible choice. But if I only had 10 exercises, I wouldn't include any direct arm work as the biceps are hit pretty well in pulling exercises and the triceps are hit well in pressing movements. If I had to give Dr. Marlin's top 10 exercises a rating, I would give it a solid 8 out of 10, which really shocks me because I expected to give him a 2 out of 10. He lost points because he had the dip for no freaking reason and for his ridiculous super range of motion exercises that are completely unnecessary and there's not enough research to back it up. I think if Dr. Marlin picked the science-backed exercises he actually does at the gym, there would have been so much more that I disagreed with. But but when optimal bodybuilders have to choose, even they pick the foundational free weight exercises, which shows what they truly think deep down inside. I also took a look at my girlfriend's top 10 exercises and Calvin Bumstead's top 10 exercises, which you should check out.